Back here on Sports Talk Chicago. Remember, today's show is brought to you by State Farm agent Ryan McDevitt. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm home and auto insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ryan McDevitt is ready to help you combine home and auto and save in Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. Call Ryan today at 630-796-2662. That's 630-796-2662. Or visit his website, ryanismyagent.com. That's ryanismyagent.com. Make sure to mention Sports Talk Chicago. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We have a caller on the line to end today's show. He's been waiting patiently. You may remember him. It's Matt from Tinley Park. Matt, how are you? Uh, it's going about as well as could be expected, John. Thanks for taking my call. I'm going to get right into it. There is absolutely no hope with this Chicago Bears team. This team is just mired in mediocrity. With The McCaskey family and the Ted Phillips have no hope. If you're a Chicago Bears fan, I don't know how in on any way, in any way possible, you can have hope when you watch that press conference and you see those two buffoons standing up there going, oh, communication is key. We have everything. You know, it's all good. We trust Ryan and Matt Nagy. We don't want to fire them because we don't want to, you know, spend money on two head coaches and two GMs next year. Oh, it's it's baffling how team, how fans continue to support this team with their hard-earned money when this team clearly does not give a damn about the fans at all. It's it, it's mind-boggling to me, John. Who do you think the Bears would even get for a quarterback next year? What's, what's your biggest takeaway from this conference, and what could they do to contend? Because they said they wanted to go all in and contend next year, but based on the schedule and based on the current roster, I don't see that happening. I don't see it happening either. That's We're perfectly in agreement here. This team has no future next year. This team may not win four games. When you're playing the entire AFC North, the entire NFC West, you're playing Tampa Bay, the New York Giants, and the Raiders if they had a seventh game, plus the entire NFC North. There is no way that this team, when you're probably running back Nick Foles or you're going to get a guy like Kyle Trask in the second round, and you're going to putz around the quarterback problem. That's just how it's going to work. You're not going to win four games, but, you know, they're going to take a quarterback in this draft. Or the, you know, Ryan Pace is going to get his fourth shot. Matt Nagy's going to get his third shot. And this team is going to be like, oh, well, you know, they took a quarterback. We got to let him see how it goes. And there's, why? Why? There's no reason to give this team any leadership. There's no reason to give the team leadership any support right now. What have they done? Nothing. How do you feel about Ryan Pace? getting another quarterback as if he already hasn't done enough damage at that position. You know, I, I like Ryan Pace. I do. I think Ryan Pace has always been, you know, uh, for the most part, straightforward with the fans. But my God, why? Why are you giving this man another <laughs> chance? It, it's how I felt last year when they drafted Cole Komet when I first saw it. It was like, why are we giving him another chance at tight end? The man clearly does not have a tie for talent on the offensive side of the ball. Just, I, I mean, I was perfectly fine with firing Ted Phillips, the bean counter who's been running football ops for 22 years, John. I was perfectly fine firing Ted Phillips and putting pace in the president role. That way we could finally have some confidence there. And then you could hire a GM like a Rick Smith or a Thomas Dimitrov who actually has an eye for quarterback talent and offensive talent. And you could, oh my goodness, you could actually get someone in the building, who knows what they're doing on the offensive side of the ball? Because Ryan Pace clearly does not know what he's doing. How do you feel about Matt Nagy coming back? That, to me, is more of an abomination than anything, only because, and you know where I stand on this, Matt. You've listened to me. He has not conformed in any way to Mitch Trubisky. I believe him, and him alone, has led to Mitch being the way he is in the NFL. How do you feel about him somehow getting another chance at another quarterback when the guy, the supposed quarterback guru, can't even help out Mitch Trubisky and found ways to undermine him, in my opinion. You know, John, me and you disagreed a lot this season on Matt Nagy. <laughs> and I am, I'm I'm going to admit it. I, can't, I am around to your way of thinking. This man is an abomination. This man is an egotistical, bald maniac. I cannot stand this man. Why? Why are you giving him another chance? This, I mean, he's throwing another coordinator under the bus. Well, I mean, how many more do you need? Is, is next year, is it going to be Bill Lazor when they draft another quarterback? 
I mean, is it going to be John DiFilippo next year? Dave Ragone? I mean, who's it going to be? Take your pick. When you heard the report that Matt Nagy could have been calling plays at the end of the year, how do you feel about that, too? Uh, nothing shocks me anymore. I mean, literally nothing. <laughs> this this entire – oh, my goodness. Matt Nagy's incompetent. Literally, I, I, I almost want to just – call and get a mental psych eval to see if he's actually <laughs> mentally competent to to run a franchise because i can't tell you honestly that that any fan has faith in this man leading a football team there's just no way there's no physical way so when do you think the bears will be competitive again it's not going to be next year we we could both agree on that there is no chance this current team unless they go out and get Phillip Rivers, they get a big-time quarterback. They draft somebody who turns out to be the next Pat Mahomes. They're not going anywhere. When do you think they could be ultra-competitive again? Because, to be honest with you, I don't see it for a long time. Not with Ted Phillips as the president. I mean, as long as Ted Phillips is the president of football operations, you are never going to see a Super Bowl in Chicago. I don't even know if you'll see a conference championship appearance in Chicago because Ted Phillips is a freaking moron. This man's an accountant. He's a TCF bank manager, basically, running a football team. Why? Why? And you have George McCaskey going, oh, we have full confidence in Ted Phillips. Oh. It's like, why? Why? Tell me why, George. And he's like, oh, the communication is wonderful. Oh. Like, really? That's it? 22 years, six playoff appearances, and you have, what, two wins? Come on. What would you have liked to see happen? Ideal situation, what would it have been? Ideal situation, you clean house with everybody gone. Ted Phillips gone. I mean, you could promote Ryan Pace to president if you want, but otherwise get him out. I mean, Matt Nagy gone. The entire coaching staff gone. Mitch, Mitch Trubisky, I mean, I'm not running it back with him next year with a new coaching staff. I'll just start from scratch. Let him start somewhere else. Just just completely blow it all. Not blow it all up. You can keep the rest of the roster, but just – New quarterback, new coaching staff, new front office, and just try and rebuild some semblance of just success. Try and start over. It's just, oh, my goodness, John. It's ridiculous. It's a multi-billion-dollar business. It's not a small family business where you can keep your friends and pucks <laughs> around all. You know, and it, this is my biggest issue. I'm going to use a metaphor real quick. Okay. You have, say you have a leaking roof. And the leaking roof gets into your insulation in the house, and it molds the insulation. What do you replace first, John? Replace the roof. Replace the roof. Yeah, you fix the roof. That's exactly right. What do the bears choose to do? They choose to let the roof continue to leak, and they continue to replace the insulation every few years with a new coach. It's ridiculous. (laughs) That's a great metaphor. What's even what's even better is you're probably going to see Allen Robinson leave and you're probably going to see guys like Akeem Hicks or one of Akeem Hicks or Kyle Fuller end up having to go. Or you're going to end up trading a bunch of draft picks for a new quarterback and you're going to end up cutting or restructuring money into the future and screwing the future over even more than the Bears already did this past season. I mean, you're probably going to restructure Khalil Mack and Eddie Goldman and any other guy that's on a big contract or Cody Whitehair or Charles Leno. You're just going to restructure them to hell. And it's, oh my goodness, the future is hopeless. There's no hope for this franchise. You know what sickens me, Matt? I'm going to give you a little bit of a spiel. I think you'll agree with this. This franchise was one of the founding members of the NFL. One of the most historic franchises in the NFL No one else could match it or top it. And yet this is the mediocrity they continue to peddle to all of us. How do you feel about that? Because I'll tell you one thing. I feel personally, I feel insulted that this amazing franchise, which has been around for nearly 100 years, is peddling the same old song and dance. I'm sick of it. I'm, I, I think every fan in Chicago, every fan worldwide of the Chicago Bears is sick of this nonsense. This team just continues to pedal out and pedal out and pedal out this mediocrity because they know fans like you and fans like me and fans like people listening to the show are still going to watch the games on TV. They're still going to go to the games at Soldier Field, which is a dump, by the way. And they're going to continue to support this franchise in every little way possible because we are too loyal to a fault, John. Oh, we, we 
need to step back and just stop. Just take a step back and stop and show the McCaskies that, hey, we're not going to give you our cash. You guys, you guys are going to suffer here if we have to suffer. That's what we need to do. Well, Matt, I thank you for holding and for giving me a call. You're welcome back anytime, and, you know, we'll just have to see how things play out. Thanks for calling, though. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Take care, bud.